Ladies and gentlemen, Intel's XCHPG GPUs have had their specifications leaked online, and I have to say that I'm extremely supportive of a third player in the industry. While Nvidia and AMD have really great products at the moment, the shortages have just been, well, horrific. But yeah, Intel have plans to enter uh, discrete GPUs. Well, actually there's several different products that they're going to be offering for data centers, also for high performance netbooks and laptops. And finally, of course, discrete GPUs, which I suspect most of you are going to be interested in. So let's have a quick look at the specs and then we can discuss further. Credit to Raichu who is one Raichu at Twitter. I'll of course link the Twitter thread in the description for this leak. Although I did somewhat obfuscate the uh, information, but Kuna has actually provided clarification as to what it meant. So uh, we'll start from the top and then work our way down. The top end SKU has 512 execution units. By the way, you need to times this number by eight to get the number of uh, stream processors. Uh, but anyway, 512 execution units, 256-bit memory interface with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of memory. Then the next one down, 384 execution units with 192-bit memory interface, 6 or 12 gigabytes, 256 execution units, 128 with either 4 or 8 gigabytes. And then it goes down to 192 execution units with the same bus width. 128 execution units with only 64 bit. And then finally, the kind of bottom of the barrel, 96 execution units with 64 bit. So the lower end SKUs are going to be more designed around, well, kind of low power devices. If you just need an auxiliary card for, let's say, you know, Word or whatever else. And we've also, of course, seen this same type of specification uh, be revealed anyway with the GG1 spec. And Intel have somewhat released those cards available to the public, kind of. The thing is, though, with those GPUs, you needed to be running an Intel processor with a specific BIOS, so it doesn't really help the market at large. Now, whether this same architecture is going to be identical to what's found in the higher-end variants is not 100% clear yet. And, yeah, so Intel's GPUs are also running uh, in a tile-based format, so it seems that gaming is going to be uh, like limited to just a single tile, with data center products going two tiles or four tiles, which obviously increase the uh, number of execution units linearly. So if you have two uh, tiles, then obviously that's 1,024 execution units. So I don't know uh, if Intel have any plans to release higher tile variants, at least for the first wave of GPUs. I'm guessing no, based upon what I've heard personally, and also what, of course, has just leaked here. Recently, I put out a video detailing the performance targets of RDNA 3, NVIDIA's Lovelace, and you guessed it, Intel XE. And I was told by a couple of people that the performance of Intel XE in ray tracing is actually surprisingly good, actually closer to NVIDIA than perhaps you might expect. But NVIDIA are also being uh, concerned because Intel, naturally, as they move into the data center, and given they have so many products, as well as the one API, could pose an awful lot of competition for Team Green. And it's going to be very interesting to see how the data center evolves, given AMD2 have a complete ecosystem with the Epic line of processors and also CDNA, which is obviously great for machine learning and such things. CDNA1 has been reasonably well received, but CDNA2, as I leaked in a previous video, is going to launch this year to my knowledge, and it's going to drastically improve performance for certain applications thanks to slight changes in the architecture. Getting back though to uh, Intel XE, yeah, there have been also some other leaks that the performance of Intel XE is actually pretty good in gaming, which seems of course to tally up to what I was stating, and it appears to be mostly driver related now optimizations and i do think that this is something that intel can work on they've got a really good team there um at the end of the day specs are great and Raja are showing us off you know tweets and showing us even some of the silicon that uh, we possibly will eventually see in data centers and uh, gaming desktops is great but it all comes down to performance however I am extremely hopeful that we will get a competitive product. I've been hearing mixed things for a while, with some people telling me that DG2 was basically canned, it was dead, but then it seems that the variant that was originally planned 
isn't being released and there were changes to the architecture. Honestly, the information there is murky, but the too long didn't read is that while a lot of the early uh, stuff that I was hearing was kind of skeptical of Intel XE, the later stuff seems to be more positive. Frankly, if we get a product, let's just use today's you know graphics cards as an example, but let's just say Intel XE launched tomorrow. It's not, but let's just say it did. And it was a decent price and competed against, let's say an RTX 3070 or an RX 6800. And again, it was a decent price. I would be very happy with that at the end of the day. And given uh, Intel are loading this thing with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it seems that they're not mising in that capacity anyway. So I'll be extremely interested to test this thing. I really am hyped to see what Intel bring to the table here. And now let's move over to NVIDIA as there are two very interesting pieces of news from Team Green. The first is resizable bar and what the NVIDIA's plans are to enable you to have resizable bar on an RTX 30 GPU. So far it seems that RTX 30 is the only series of GPUs that NVIDIA plan to do this on. But yeah, basically the RTX 3060 ships with resizable bar support. You will of course need to download the latest drivers as you would with any new GPU release. And you will also need, of course, resizable bar support on your motherboard. So if you have an AMD um, platform, then it's a little simpler uh, because let's say the X500 series boards already have a resizable bar support for Zen 3. However, if you have an Intel platform, then yeah, resizable bar is still a thing if you have like a 10th generation. Certain vendors such as uh, Asus, MSI, and a couple of others have released uh, new BIOSes for their motherboards, although not all motherboards have been updated with resizable bar support. And then basically you do a BIOS flash and you're good to go. I've actually done some testing on this using the RX 6800 XT, uh, which was sent by AMD on both an Intel and an AMD system. So you can check out those corresponding videos if you so want to, uh, which are linked in the video description. But what if you own an RTX 3060 Ti or another GPU? What happens then? Well, TLDR is that Late March, NVIDIA are going to release new drivers, of course, but just as critically, new BIOSes. Now, how the BIOS works will depend on whether you have a Founders Edition card or an AIB card. We'll talk about the FE first. So if you have a Founders Edition card, again, late March, there's not an exact release date yet. You will just go to NVIDIA's website, you will download the BIOS, and then it will, uh, you know, you have to flash it. Whether NVIDIA are going to provide us some type of, you know, easy, super duper easy tool, or whether you will have to use, you know, a third party tool, uh, then we don't know that. As for an AIB, as you would probably imagine, you would go to their website. So if you have an Asus Strix, you go to the Asus website, look at your specific card, download the BIOS, and you're good to go. I imagine you could probably use a Founders Edition BIOS, but, as you would probably imagine, it would also mess up your boost profiles if you have like a heavily overclocked GPU and all of that stuff. So you're probably best just to get your specific AIB BIOS. And that's about it. Um, it's kind of annoying that you have to do a BIOS update, although it's not particularly a big deal to do a BIOS update for, well, a VBIOS update, I guess. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm very much looking forward to testing this out. Uh, as I said, I did extensive testing for AMD, so I'm very much looking forward to doing the same for NVIDIA. It's going to be very interesting to see how resizable bar affects things going forward in terms of performance. Yeah, resizable bar at the moment either doesn't improve performance at all or could offer 10, 12, 15% at best case scenarios. But going forward, DirectX 12 is going to heavily start to utilize direct storage, I suspect. And that could actually impact performance even more for uh, products which actually do support resizable bar. As you can imagine, we'll do extensive testing when uh, that becomes available. And the last final thing for today actually concerns NVIDIA and their mining focused GPUs. Credit to videocards.com, by the way, for this discovery. And it's actually courtesy of NVIDIA themselves, funnily enough. The 461.72 drivers actually reference the uh, 30 and 40 HX GPUs. Now these of course are crypto mining focused products which NVIDIA have already detailed. Those are going to launch first and then the higher end GPUs, well, uh, well, CMPs if you prefer, 
launch later on. Now, what's really interesting about this specific uh, leak, and I say it in such a way because it was quite literally in the drivers, is that it does confirm that these products are based on Turing, not Ampere, although we don't know about the rest of the products, of course, as of the time I'm recording this. This is actually a really good thing because obviously Turing is made on a completely different process to what Ampere is. Of course, what the actual shortages are of the GPUs could also impact things as well. So if, for example, it's something like power delivery or memory or something else, which the two architectures actually do share, then that's still going to impact things a bit. But at least in terms of the silicon production of the actual raw GPU die, well, this might help to eliminate at least some of the gobbling up and cannibalization of the RTX 30 series, which of course gamers want. It's going to be interesting whether this actually does impact things anyway. I mean, mining honestly is kind of vacuous at the end of the day. Like, even if NVIDIA were magically to be able to supply 10 times the number of GPUs, um, let's say RTX 3080s or whatever, to the market, miners would still gobble them up because at the end of the day, miners, they don't need just one card to play, you know, a game. They want as many as they can because it's a profit motive. So the only real limitations are how much money they have to work with and also things such as, I don't know, like the space they've got. Uh, obviously, if they have only a smaller amount of space, then you might have issues as well actually trying to cool the thing or whatever else. Or if you've got like, you're trying to do it from home and your you know, wiring's a bit dodgy, you might not want to risk an electrical fire. But at the end of the day, you are not really worried about only buying one card, you wanna buy as many as possible. So hopefully this will help to offset things. As a quick reminder with the RTX 3060, it is not just a driver issue which prevents the card from doing well in mining, but also BIOS and also silicon. So all three have to do like a little buddy handshake. And when they do that handshake, it basically allows a uh, application to run uh, without hindrance. But if it does detect mining software, it will cut the hash rate considerably by 50%. Whether or not this is something that you can circumvent in six, 12 months, I honestly don't know. But I imagine it will act as a pretty good deterrent in the short term. And of course it will push people to buy the CMP versions if you do want to do crypto mining. With all of that said though, thank you very much for checking out the video. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.